Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. It's the first in the series of modeling linear relationships in the HSC General 2 course. Um, today's lesson will be very basic, just looking at how to graph a linear function. Before I do start, I'm just going to remind you what is a linear function. Well, that's in the form of y equals mx plus b. It's a straight line graph where the m is well, represents the gradient value, which is like the slope or how steep something is, and the B represents the y-intercept or where it cuts the y-axis. Um, so how do we uh, graph a, a straight line graph? Well, very basic. First of all, you construct a table of values, which I'll show you for the next question. You then draw a number plane or a Cartesian plane with the independent variable and the uh, dependent variable, which I'll explain to you as well, and then we join the points to make the straight line. So very, very uh, basic, and this can work not just for linear relationships, but for most, uh, for any nonlinear graph as well. So first of all, we are now going to construct the graph by looking at a table of values. The table of values, we generally use the same table for, well, for most graphs, really, realistically. Um, I'm going to start with having negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 on my table of values for my x values. That will allow me to find the y coordinate for these particular x coordinates. And thinking that your Cartesian plane looks like this, you know, you've got x values of negative 1, negative 2 on the left, and then 1 and 2 on the right. They're my x coordinates. You could put more in if you wish, if you want to put 3 then you'd be able to find the y coordinate there. Um, you could only just put negative 1, 0, and 1 there and have those three. It doesn't really matter, um, but it's up to what you would like to do. Now, number uh, to finish off the first part, my table of values, we're simply substituting the x coordinate into the actual equation there. So in this case, we're doing negative 2 plus 1. Well, that equals negative 1. Then I'm putting negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. Then I'm putting 0 in, which is 1, putting 1 in, which is going to be 1 plus 1 is 2, and then I'm putting 2 in there, 2 plus 1 is 3. And what's going to happen, you'll notice that these all go up by the same amount. In this case, we're going up by 1. Um, that's because it's a 1x. If it was a 2x, this would be going up by 2. The second part now is to plot my x coordinates and y coordinates. Now, you may have heard me saying something about um, the dependent variable and the independent variable. Dependent. So what are the dependent and independent variables? Well, what is a dependent person? A dependent person is someone who depends on somebody else. Therefore, in this equation, y will always depend on what x is. For example, when x was negative 2, y had to be negative 1. When x was negative 1, y had to be 0. So the x value determines what the y is going to be, making the y value the dependent, which means that the x value is the independent because he can be whatever he wants to be. I can put 10 there if I wanted to be and that makes it 10 plus 1 is 11. Therefore, you do get questions asking about what is the value of the dependent variable. The independent variable just means the dependent is the y coordinate, the independent is the x coordinate. So in this question now, what I need to do is simply plot these coordinates in. Noticing I'm only going, going from negative 1 to 3 on my y-axis, so I'm going to put my values there, negative 1, um, 1, 2, and 3. Um, noticing that I must be evenly spaced between these values on my y-axis, um, and then I need to be evenly spaced for my x-coordinates. I could have my x-coordinates a lot wider. They don't have to be the same as the y-coordinates, but it's up to what really looks good for your graph. And try and make use of, this, uh, of the amount of room that you've got on your page. In this case, I'm now going to plot the coordinates. So I've got negative 2, negative 1. I'm going to have negative 1, 0. That's my x, um, x intercept, I guess. 0, then 1. That's my y intercept. And you can see that there from the plus 1. I've got my 1, 2, and my 2, 3. Again, it doesn't matter if I can't plot all my coordinates from a table of values. It doesn't matter. Just as long as I can plot two or three of them. I can now then get my ruler and then draw my line all the way through, making sure I go from one corner of my graph to the other corner and I use all the space. I then label my graph 
y equals x plus 1. Okay, that's pretty much it because I've done the first three things. Then I've uh, drawn my straight line. I've got them all there and that works out really nicely. Okay, the next graph, I would like you please to pause this and I want you to graph y equals 3x minus 1. Okay, welcome back. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw my table of values just to make this a bit more time um, worthy. I'm just going to put ne negative 1, 0, and 1 there. I'm only going to put the three coordinates this time. Um, just means I'm plotting less coordinates, but it doesn't mean anything else for my graph. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Take 1 away, it's minus 4. 3 times 0 is 0. Take away 1 is minus 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Minus 1 is 2. I can now draw my... Uh, Cartesian plane, obviously yours will look a lot nicer than mine. I'm going to put there negative 1, neg uh, sorry, positive 1. I'm only going to put 2 and negative 2 there, although I haven't got the values in my table. That doesn't matter. Um, I need to go down to negative 4. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and 1, 2, 3, and 4. I've got my values in my table, so I can now just plot them for my graph. So negative 1, negative 4, I'll plot my coordinate. Uh, 0, negative 1, that's my y-intercept. And again, you can see that from the graph there. And then 1, 2 is here. I can now get my ruler, and I'm going to draw a nice straight line through those three points and label it as y equals 3x minus 1. Noticing again, I've used the whole graph. I've gone through those coordinates there, um, and it's quite nice. Now, if you'd use negative 2 to positive 2, that just means that you're going to have probably more values on this graph leveled in, which is um, it's not bad, but certainly a minimum of those three values would be great. Okay, the last one, we've got a negative gradient for this one. And remember, that's my gradient value. It means my graph will be going something like this. Uh, it's plus 3, so go through 3 there. It's going to look something like that. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to draw my table of values. Again, you could have paused this and done this yourself. Um, my y values on top, sorry, my x values on top, sorry. x and then y, um, negative 1, 0, and 1. Again, you can use more values. I've just decided to use 3 because I want this to be under 10 minutes. Um, negative a half times 1, so it's times negative 1. That's positive a half plus 3. That's three and a half. I'm going to put it as a decimal so it's easier to graph. Um, zero times negative half is zero, plus three is three. And then negative half times one is negative half plus three is 2.5. And you can see it's going down, which is the negative, by um, 0 0.5. And you can see that's a half. So you can see in this case, that's my gradient, and that's what it's going down by. Okay, um, please try and put it as a decimal if possible because it's much easier when you're graphing it. So now I'm going to do our Cartesian plane. Uh, I'm going to put negative 1, negative 2. I'm going to put 1 and 2 on that side. And then I'm going to space these out a little bit. Oh, not too much. I've got 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yours should look much nicer than mine. I'm going to put negative 1, negative 2 there. And then I'm going to put my coordinates. So negative 1 and 3.5. So it's going to be between the 3 and the 4. 0 and 3, that's my y-intercept, the plus 3 as you can see, and then 1 and 2 and a half, which I've got there. I'm going to draw my line straight through it and keep on going down. Again, mine's not very accurate, guys. Yours should be. Label it as y equals negative a half x plus 3. You've got your answers there. Okay, so again, when you're drawing your uh, your um, straight line, please make sure that you uh, draw your table of values. You chuck your values in. Hopefully, they're all correct. Try and put at least three. Um, usually, negative two to positive two is a quick way of doing it as well. That means you're a bit more consistent. Plot them, label your graph, and then hopefully, uh, yeah, it's all good. Um, thanks, guys. Hopefully, this made sense. And the next lesson, we'll be looking at writing the equation given a straight line. Have a great day.